It is one of West Michigan's most baffling mysteries. What happened to Deanie Peters? The 14-year-old Forest Hills Middle School student disappeared on February 5th, 1981, 40 years ago tomorrow. Target 8 investigator Ken Colker has covered this case for decades. He spoke with Deanie's mother and the cold case detective who worked the investigation. Brian and Sue, the head of the cold case team that worked for four years on the disappearance of Deanie Peters, says witnesses are still holding closely to secrets that could solve this case. She fears that they will die with those secrets. On February 5th, 1981, Deanie was at her brother's wrestling practice. Do you think you've spoken to people who know what happened to her? Absolutely. She told her mom, I'll be right back, and was never seen again. Do you think there are people still alive who might know where she's buried? Yes. I'm 74 years old. How many more years do I have left before they find something, or are they never going to find something? I'm running out of time. Mary Peters was 34 when Deanie disappeared. She made a televised plea for help. And it's been too long now. She's just gone, and I want her home. An age progression shows how Deanie would have changed through the years. She would be 54 now. Her mom lives in Arizona. And we missed eighth grade graduation. We missed dances. We missed prom. We missed high school. Maybe we missed a wedding. Maybe we missed her going to college and graduating for college. Who knows what would have happened? We missed a lot. And I know maybe right now I sound kind of, I sound kind of cold. I don't mean to, but sometimes I have to put a shield up so I just don't break down and cry. Detectives originally focused on the school janitor, suspecting he had burned Deanie's body in the incinerator, but he was cleared. But there was one suspect the original detectives could not clear, despite his denials. Bruce Bunch from Lowell, 17 at the time. The Kent Metro cold case team, which started working on it in 2008, could not clear Bunch either. Over four years, the team interviewed more than 200 people, searched up to 15 possible burial sites. We could never eliminate Bruce Bunch. We actually uncovered some proof that Bruce had some involvement in this along with others. And our focus then went to those people. One theory, that Bunch knew a girl who had fought with Deanie, that he had driven at Deanie with his car to scare her outside the middle school, that his car slid on ice and that he hit her. That's one of the theories that we've heard as well. And I can't disprove that. Bunch, who became an alcoholic, died in Somerset, Kentucky in 2008 before the cold case team could reach him. You think Bruce Bunch died with his secret? No. He told 20 to 30 of his friends during that time and none of them believed him. Did he ever say it was Deanie Peters? The girl from Forest Hills. She believes at least two people know exactly what happened to Deanie. Perhaps she hopes they'll find religion, or perhaps they'll face their own mortality. You're hoping maybe it, it somehow hits their heart? Can only hope. Would these people face prosecution? No. Unless they themselves murdered Deanie Peters. There would be no prosecution. The original detective on the case kept working on it, even into retirement, vowing to find Deanie. So you think you're getting pretty close to where Deanie's buried? I hope so. But will we ever know? Because Bruce is gone? I don't know. He died in 2018. Sally Walter, who ran the Kent Metro cold case team, recently retired and now hosts a true crime TV show. Every homicide detective really is proud of the cases that they solve, but the cases that they didn't are the ones that keep them up at night. And this case, Deanie Peters, is the one that does that for me. Why? All you have to do is look at Mary Peters, and you'll never get that look out of your mind. That's a broken woman who's lived with this tragedy for over 40 years. What would I say to that person that knows something? Just give me peace of mind. I don't care. I would not prosecute you. I would not hope you spend the rest of your life in prison or whatever. All I'm saying is just come forward and give me peace of mind. Let me know where she is.
We spoke to the Kent County Sheriff today who says it would take just one solid tip to renew this investigation. Boy, it seems like it, Ken. They've gotten so close over the years. You hear the anguish in Dini mother's voice. Why not give some closure to that family? Just takes one phone call. Yeah. Ken, Just hope it you. happens. Thank you, Ken.